Thank you very much. Uh, welcome, everyone. It's a great pleasure for me to be here in Madeira and to have such a wonderful welcome by the, the entire community of the University of Madeira and by the wonderful events and by the hard work that all the team has been uh, doing here for the past uh, three days. So this uh, presentation is to deliver the general outlook and the activities that we are developing in the INCORE project, which, as Eduardo just said, is about innovation capacity building for higher education in Europe's outermost regions. So this is the main theme of the project. Uh, just a little bit of a background in regards to the project. So this is funded by the European Institute of Innovation and Technology, which is uh, funded by the European Union and is part of the Horizon uh, program. The EIT is a knowledge innovation model, which is known as the knowledge triangle, which seeks to bring together higher education, business and research and technology uh, in view of creating conditions for entrepreneurship and innovation in uh, the innovation ecosystems throughout the European Union. And so there is a specific initiative, which is called the HEI initiative, higher education institution initiative, which uh, funds a number of projects and INCOR was one of them. So we were very proud to get top score by the evaluators and we are working very hard to keep the standards and to uh, fulfill all the goals and go even beyond those goals. So the idea is very well expressed by the Commissioner for Innovation, Research, Culture, Education and Youth which is a recognition that the universities have a critical role to play in the development of innovation ecosystems. And so this is why we have a number of partners that are universities that have joined together, together also with uh, uh, SMEs, startups, and also with research centers that help boosting the, our project. So with regards to the project itself, the INCORE consortium as six partners. Four of them, they are higher education institutions that are looking at new partnerships overseas and that want to reach out to strategic regions of the European Union in order to mutually support themselves to achieve uh, their goals and to extract the value from opportunities uh, to increase mobility and to uh, have fixed talent in the outermost regions. So we have Institute Superior Technical which is the leading partner and engages various departments that are well known for their uh, innovation and entrepreneurship capacities and also for making long lasting links with the other partners of uh, their activities. We have University de la Réunion, which brings together departments that are focusing on uh, implementing the circular economy and also in achieving the sustainable development goals. We have Universidad Europea Canarias, which brings the aspect of social science, social sciences when, with an emphasis on the Green Deal and the Canary Circular Economy, plus the, technology, the, technology, the technological support that is needed to design more sustainable infrastructure. And finally, but definitely not the least, we have Universidad de Madeira uh, with various faculties that are working together to create a new innovation hub, which is based on a number of themes, eco-entrepreneurship, green accounting and sustainable finance, innovation for sustainability and digital, and social sustainability and inclusion. But the knowledge triangle would not be complete without partners that are very important uh, for each region. And this is La Palma Research Center, which has already been a member of various European projects and as an extensive experience in supporting and transferring and establishing links with universities and other actors of the knowledge triangle. We also have Trisolaris Advanced Technologies, which is a startup that is based in the Azores. It's a small scale manufacturer of advanced hardware and robotic components that is actively seeking meaningful cooperation with the universities. So the general idea of this project is that the outermost regions are geographically isolated from the European mainland. 
but it, and it is somehow fair to say that these regions uh, lag behind in terms of innovation and entrepreneurship in several areas, such as clean energy or recycling or environmentally friendly food systems. <coughs> that was confirmed by the self-assessment that the various partners have done in each region. But we have also in the meantime, as we start working together, also saw that there are a number of opportunities and we have also things to learn, to teach to the European mainland. So this is something that we have been realizing and that we, we are looking forward to explore. But we do have to recognize that there are challenges that we need to face and such as meeting the Paris Agreement and the EU Green Deal goals. We have vulnerabilities to climate change issues we have energy poverty and security issues that we have to deal with. And there are somehow some limited training and education opportunities that we want to uh, create. This often leads to what is called as, uh, known as the brain drain, and also to a share of young people that are not graduated or eventually are unskilled. So we want to uh, help solving problems related to unemployment, and also dealing with complex business environments, such as those of the outermost regions. But on the other hand, we know that these regions have a very high potential for green and blue growth. There is plenty of value that can be derived from the natural assets of these regions, which are often unique. And we have a very important strategic and geopolitical influence for the European Union. And this is something that is also worth um, exploring. So to sum up the vision of uh, this project, we are focused on three main uh, um, factors of activity. The first one is training and education for less innovative regions. The second one is to implement the knowledge triangle collaboration with a very proactive participation of higher education institutions. And finally, we also want to support effectively uh, the creation of new businesses in the outermost regions. So with regards to the activities, we are at this moment in phase one. So this started in July and it is completed by the end of 2021. And this is basically to set the stage. So we, we have a, a greater knowledge now about the institutional capacity of the higher education institutions in the the regions where the partners are based. We are analyzing the innovation environments in these regions, and we are starting to think about ways of developing entrepreneurship training programs that can be uh, done as a group, but also to see if there are some uh, individual actions that are needed for each region. And these will be laid down in a roadmap for implementing these actions during phase two, which is to start uh, next year. So we are looking forward for another one year and a half of hard work. We have to be, uh, well, uh, so the phase one will be evaluated by the European Union and we are uh, very highly confident that we will fulfill all the requirements to go move forward for phase two. And we very much look forward to that. So phase two will basically be the deployment of the training programs the implementation of modalities, new modalities for cooperation between universities and SMEs, and then the joint and individual actions for transformational change that we find adequate uh, in the consortium. So for the time being, uh, phase one will be evaluated through KPIs that express the impacts that our activities are um, achieving. And so this is the number of start or scale up supported, the number of students, academic staff, but also non-academic staff that is trained and mentored, the number of joint workshops on innovation and research. And this is one example that we have been doing here that we organized today, training programs, and the number of startups that are established and the number of collaboration agreements between the stakeholders of the knowledge triangle. And finally, but definitely not the least, we do not want just to achieve KPIs for a single year. We want our actions to be sustained in time. And in view of that, we are looking into the possibility of creating an association to explore 
all the value that we can derive from this mission. So this slide is very wordy. I will not go into the details of all the, the information that is presented here. I just wanted to highlight a few ideas that all the each region has in mind, uh, which is the creation of job and businesses, the diminishing of the dropout rates in schools, the development of young talent with entrepreneurial and innovation skills. We also want to enhance the access uh, to school uh, training programs and entrepreneurship for the general population. And we end higher engagement with reskilling and upskilling courses. And there are other elements that I would then invite you to uh, read in this slide, which I will not go into the details right now. So these are the long-term impacts. But after our uh, project was awarded by the European Union, there was a publication of a new resolution by the European Parliament that says that we all, we all want a stronger partnership with the EU outermost regions. This is very important. There are these four main points the European Union are very, is very much looking forward to, and we are adjusting and learning and adapting our activities in line with EU policy, but also bearing in mind the specific needs that each region need and uh, the importance that these regions have, not only for the European Union, but globally as well. So we, we must be very aware of that. This is very important. So finally, this is just to say that at this moment, the INCOR project has members from Madeira and the Azores Islands. We have also members from the Canary Islands and from La Réunion, which is one of the French islands, but there's a potential to expand these activities for all the outermost regions. As you can see in this map, they are very widespread. And so there is a huge presence geographically throughout the world. So Madeira is part of this wider uh, understanding of the outermost regions and plays a very, very important role in this regard. So and finally, I would like to address an invitation to all of you to follow us on our website and on social media because we regularly publish our activities and our achievements. So you're all welcome to follow us. Thank you very much. <laughs>